Red Bull, what the actual is going on? It's like you take them one of the most successful Formula One teams ever, and what do you do? You start destroying it from the inside out? Because from an outsider's point of view, that's what seems to be happening. Why have these two literal bulls of the Formula One circuit, Jos Verstappen and Christian Horndog, sorry, Christian Horner, gone head to head against each other? Is there more to it than just a woman? The rumour is that Jos Verstappen was maybe having something of an extracurricular activity with this alleged woman. And he took offence when Christian Horndog Horner decided to start texting her with flirtatious texts. What's the actual truth? What really went down? Well, we may never know, but we do know a few things. One, the Horndog has been caught out. The CEO of Red Bull Racing, Christian Horner, who's been there since 2005 and built the team from the remnants of the old Jackie Stewart team, formerly Ford, then Jaguar, into Red Bull Racing and the dominating force that it is under his stewardship, along with his driver, Max Verstappen. But is he his driver? Again, there's more to this than actually meets the eye. And what's it got to do with Yoss? Why do we care about him? Fathers in the pit lane have always been a bit strange and they need to tread a careful line. Carlos Sainz Sr. you hardly ever see and he doesn't seem to take an awful lot of hands-on. Whereas Lewis Hamilton's father used to be quite vocal and used to be there at almost every race. Remember Jensen Button's dad? He was there as a very strong supporter of Jensen but never really interfered with how the team were running things. But Jos Verstappen seems to be trying to reignite his, let's sell we say, mediocre Formula 1 career by leveling it through his son Max. <clears throat> but anyway, to cut to the chase, what happened? Well, we believe it's Christian's PA, Fiona Hewitson. We're not exactly 100% sure, but she has done some strange things. One, she appears to be suspended from Red Bull. Two, she's deleted all her Instagram stuff and all her Twitter from February. It just disappeared. Um, she doesn't appear on LinkedIn either. So maybe there is some smoke here under the fire. The fire that is the horn dog's love interest. So she complained to Red Bull's headquarters in Austria. Now, hold on. Red Bull's based in Milton Keynes. No. Red Bull Racing is based in Milton Keynes. Red Bull Powertrains are based in Milton Keynes. But Red Bull GmbH, the parent company, Red Bull, as you know, the energy drink, is based in Austria. And that was the brainchild of Dieter Maschitz, who died in 2022. He was a very strong supporter of Christian Horner. But his son Mark doesn't seem to have the same loyalty. His son Mark seems to be more involved with Helmut Marko. And this is where things start to get interesting. Or, or is, are we just making up conspiracies now? Because we never actually know what's going on. Let's try and determine the timeline of what's happened here. So the young lady has complained to Red Bull at their headquarters. She didn't work at Milton Keynes. She worked at an office in London, Red Bull representation office. She was in charge of media, or not in charge of media, but she was part of the media team and Christian's Honours PA, so she would meet when she went out to Grand Prix. Now, it's rumoured that Jos was getting quite friendly with her and was meeting her on a number of occasions. Jos, the married man, with two kids by his current wife, I believe? Yes, Jos has been married three times, so, hmm, maybe Jos has got a penchant for the ladies. Christian, currently married to Jerry Halliwell, a.k.a. Spice Girl, former Spice Girl Jerry, <coughs> was sending flirtatious texts to her. And there's, there may be, it may be that you could construe that something might have been going on. It's hard to actually pin it down. Um, although, file 76, oh no, we'll come to that. Although, we'll come to it when we start discussing the files. The horn dog files. So GmbH took this seriously, as you would any complaint from any employee, and you would investigate it. And they investigate it, inappropriate behaviour against the CEO of Red Bull Racing, Christian Horner. Let's investigate it. 
they brought in a King's Council to head up the the investigation. The investigation concluded it was presented to the board and after it was presented, the board cleared Christian Horner of any wrongdoing. Now, that's not the same as saying the report cleared Christian Horner of any wrongdoing because we don't know what's in the report. They never told us what was in the report, just said that the board were clearing Christian of any wrongdoing. So the question is, was there any smoke there without fire? Now, apparently the young lady in question had time to appeal that decision. And the time that she had to appeal that decision appears to have run out. Although, she has now been reported in British newspapers, who refused to name her for some reason. But it's quite it's quite obvious now who she is, are reporting that she's going to be making an appeal. Or is it that she's going to be making a civil uh, a, a civil case against them? So we're, we need to find out exactly what's going to happen there. But after Christian was cleared, the horn dog files were released. Who did that? Because the texts that were involved were released and released in a most insidious way. They were emailed directly to every Formula One team principal. They were emailed directly to Ben Samuel Hayam. Some, some, oh, the guy that runs FIA and the guy that runs Formula One, Stefan, Stefano Domenicali. They were also released to Jos Verstappen. Who released these files? Again, we're not 100% sure, but we have a good idea of who did it. The ball's back in play because no sooner has Horner been cleared than these files might be implicating him in some actual wrongdoing. So what does the horn dog do? Well, he turned up at the first Grand Prix with Jerry, obviously showing a consolidated front. And then he turns up at the second Grand Prix and he's still dragging Jerry around. And it's like a media campaign of... Look how good my marriage is. Kissing. Cuddling. Touching. Kissing. Cuddling. Touching. At every opportunity. It's like it was all stage managed, but Jerry, Jerry looks like she's out of it. This has come as a kind of surprise to her. And maybe the doctors had to say, hmm, you might have to take these to get through this because Christian's going to put you on parade and pretend everything's all rosy and sweet. And that's exactly what seems to have happened because now we're hearing... That Jerry might want to go on holiday on her own. On her own? Wow. Meanwhile, Mr. Verstappen has said Red Bull will explode unless Christian Horner leaves. Christian Horner has no intention of going anywhere. In fact, Christian Horner wants the same kind of deal as Toto Wolf has at Mercedes because Christian Horner is still an employee of Red Bull Racing. He really wants a stake in the team. That's what he wants, and he's pushing for that. But you say, if he's done this wrong, why hasn't the board thrown him out? Why haven't the board thrown him out? Well, this is where it gets juicy, because now we have confrontation between Austria and Thailand. Thailand? What's Red Bull got to do with Thailand? Well, the guy you did I have, the Thai businessman, he owns 51% of Red Bull. Mark Maschusitz, Dieter's son, only owns 49%. So there may be a bit of a power struggle going. And Yudi Dayev has always been kind of on Horner's side, and, and very much so. But now he's asking questions because things have been released and we don't know where the actual true situation is. And Honda are asking questions as well because they're still kind of the team supplier because Red Bull, Bull Powertrains isn't quite up and running. And now Ford are asking questions. You know, what's actually going on at Red Bull because Ford are going to be involved in Red Bull powertrains come 2026 when the, when the regulations change. It's really becoming a mess. The board released a statement saying that Christian Horner had been cleared and the board were very much in favour of him continuing. But then drama. Helmut Marko got fingered. Fingered? Fingered as the releaser of the horn dog files. Did he do it? Did he? We don't know. It could be that he did though because Helmut Marko, Max and Jos have been very close. Very close. And Jos and, Jos and Christian have kind of drifted apart. Possibly because they've been butting heads for the same woman. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, Helmut gets figured and then has an interview with ORF. Now Helmut isn't actually an employee of Red Bull racing and isn't actually an employee of Red Bull GmbH. He's a private contractor to Red Bull GmbH and has a three-year contract at the moment. He's always been known as 
saying things when he shouldn't. He, he, he talks out of turn. And Red Bull have actually said that he's not an approved spokesman for Red Bull. So anything that, Red, that Helmet says isn't isn't to be taken as a statement by Red Bull. But Helmet decides to do an interview with ORF, the Austrian broadcaster. But more than that, he gives them a list of questions that they should maybe be asking him. He gives them a list of questions? Huh? Yeah, and one of those questions is, are you likely to be suspended before the Australian Grand Prix? What? So, Helmut obviously thinks that he's going to get suspended. And it, what is, it's a masterful media campaign, isn't it? Because he's kind of taken the rug out from under them by not saying it, but by getting the, by getting the, um, <coughs> by being, but by getting the media to ask him the question. So Red Bull then released a statement saying, Helmut Marco is staying. And that then gives us a, a sigh of relief because Max Verstappen was talking about leaving if his pal Marco gets the bums rush. My goodness. But then why would Max Verstappen leave what is the best car on the grid? Just because, and let's face it, Helmut's getting on in years. He's 81 or something like that. Why would he leave just because Helmut isn't at the team? I mean, he can still talk to him, you know. Well, it's a, maybe it's a question of loyalty. So what of the angry Dutchman? Well, the angry Dutchman, he makes further statements saying, this isn't going to die down. Christian's trying to pour oil on the troubled waters and the angry Dutchman. And you may think, why do you call Jos Verstappen the angry Dutchman? Well, Jos Verstappen got a five-year jail sentence in 2000 for fracturing somebody's skull. Huh? He didn't go to jail though, because under Belgian law, if you give the person some money, you can get a reduced jail sentence. So he got it suspended. And that was Jos Verstappen and his dad that both got the same sentence after a fight at a kart track while Jos Verstappen was a Formula 1 driver. And let's say, a mediocre one. I think he finished 12th that year. So where are we now? What happens? So now we've got Austria fighting Thailand. Christian fighting Jos, Max on the side of his father and Helmut, Helmut snubs Christian after the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and goes home on Max's private jet and not Christian's. Oh, it is actually starting to cause some friction in the team. And yeah, they still go on to take 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two at the first two Grand Prix of the, the season. So it, uh, it would appear that Max may have a get-out clause if Helmut Marko is let go, shall we say, or leaves the team, then I think Max might have a get-out clause of his contract, which is valid till 2028, that allows him to leave and go to another team. And of course, the other teams are sniffing around like rabid dogs on, some, on, a, on a vixen who's in heat, aren't they? Because Total Wolf's like, ooh, ooh, We've got a space, we've got a space, and we're going to have a good car. We are going to have a good car. <laughs> and then McLaren are going, ooh, we might have a space, because Red Bull, to replace Max, might consider Piastri. Would they consider Sainz? Probably not. I think Sainz is going to have to stick with Sauber and Audi if he wants to get a decent drive on the grid. And, and that ties in with the kind of family ties with Audi that his father... Carlos Sainz Sr. has had for, oh, cause that must be 30 or 40 years because he's been rallying. So now we have Max possibly moving, possibly not. You're saying things can't go on as they are. The board backing Christian and saying Christian's going to continue. What's going to happen? What do you think's going to happen? I don't have a clue. Is Christian Horner going to stay at Red Bull? Would they let Max go? Hey, drivers come and go. And they're only as good as, you know, the last result, really. Because, look, let's face it, you put Lewis Hamilton in that car, he'd win the World Championship. And I really don't like Lewis Hamilton. You put Alonso in that car, he'd win the World Championship. Wouldn't matter what other car you put Max in, other than a Red Bull, they'd beat him. Because the car, that car, is dominant. And yes, in Max's hand, it's maybe more dominant than it is under his, his sidekick, Checo. But... You put a top-class driver in that car, he's going to win the World Championship. It's not all the car, but it's a big part of it. So what's going to happen? Is Red Bull going to settle down? I can't see that happening because there's too much friction now. Jos has got the bit between his teeth. And remember, the last time the Dutch really, really got angry, they deposed their Prime Minister and ate him. 
Yeah, they did. What are we going to do? What What's going to happen? What's Red Bull going to do? How are they going to resolve this? Who's going to take control? Is Christian going to get a stake in Red Bull at some point? He's willing to put the money in. He's got the backing of the major shareholder. Just now, the engine suppliers are still asking questions. We're asking questions. The media are in a frenzy about it. Netflix must be rubbing their hands in glee because we've just had something like five years worth of gossip in the first two races of the Grand Prix season. And you know what? The bad thing is, it's more interesting than the actual racing is. Oh, what does that say about the state of Formula One?